Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we praise you, Lord, for the opportunity to worship you tonight. We ask that you forgive us from all our sins that we have committed in our minds, in our acts, Lord. We are unworthy, Lord. We thank you for your mercy and your love to us. We ask that you pour your Holy Spirit to us tonight as we study your word, and especially to me as I read your word. I don't know the, your children, Lord, what they need at this, at, their, at this time. Thank you for hearing our prayers and just let me pray. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Uh, one of the questions as a student in your mind will be, what are my plans or where am I going in life? Or what happens after I graduate? What happens if I pass the exam? What happens if I fail the exam? So these things are, were in my mind also when I was a student like you. I remember when I was a college student here in this uh, great church, I was sitting there in that corner. In my mind, I was praying to God, Lord, what do you want me to do? What should I do with my life? You know, those things are in, a, in our mind as we try to plan. But as we look in uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, there is a very nice verse here. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So we are assured here, brothers and sisters, my dear students, that God has a nice plan for us. You know, there are actually only two destinations. Either you end up in heaven or you end up in hell. That is the, really the big question. Some pastor was saying, why do you need to study so that you can become a good computer scientist in hell? So actually, there are something more important than our studies. We cannot, it's no use of being a doctor or a dentist or even a theologian if we are going to end up in hell, right? So really, what is our plan? What is God's plan for us? You know, I also, my assignment here is to promote ministries and also to tell my testimonies and of course, to read the word of God. You know, when, uh, when I was college, I was not very much into ministry. I was very lazy to go to church even only sometimes. Because what am I going to do here? I'm just going to sit. But if I have part, I want to come. Because at least, you know, there is more motivation. But uh, when I'm not coming, I'm reading the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. So, uh, but I realized uh, I had a business before. And my business, you know, in business, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. And you know, in business, you have what you call an investment, right? You invest like this money, looking forward that you will get more money. So when my business stopped, my monkey business stopped, uh, I found out, I said, money is not reliable. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not there. Our profession is not reliable, sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not there. There is only one thing that's reliable, the Bible says, you store your treasure in heaven. So instead of looking for another business, the few money that I got, I promised the Lord to put it all in ministry because there is only one bank that does not go bankrupt. It is the heaven bank, bank of heaven. The Bible says where moth and, moth and rust do not attack, where thieves do not come, and it doesn't go bankrupt like the banks in the U.S. where they will bail out by the government the government even can go bankrupt, will be bailed out in the future by another stronger power according to our prophecy. So, if that is the proposition of the business where your business partner will never cheat you, God will never cheat you, where we are sure that every peso we get will be converted to gold, right? Gold. Send your treasure to heaven 
If you have planned to go to heaven, you send your treasure again ahead of you because you cannot send, you cannot bring your treasure anyway. You only bring your character. The only way to bring your pesos is to send it in a ministry. So we had many ministries. All the ministries I was helping, you know, we have many small groups. People ask me, sir, what small group do you belong? I said, I don't know. Anybody who asks, I will just go. Sometimes they have conflicts. I just let the Lord solve the conflicts. Anyway, it's his work, so. But, you know, in ministry, even in youth ministry, in uh, old, minis old people ministry, in preaching ministry, in TV ministry, we have many, we have many goals, right? We, we ask the Lord to bless this, to bless that. Please do this, please do this. But I found out recently, there is a nice prayer better than asking the Lord for many, many things. I want to share to you, before I used to ask, please Lord, please Lord, please do, please do, please do, please do. And of course, not everything is God's will. The Lord answers, but sometimes it's no. Sometimes it's a wait. So I just changed my prayer. I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Since he is the one approving the requests, why don't I just ask God, what time, kinds of things should I be requesting? And when I change that prayer, of course there's nothing wrong with uh, asking. Ask and it shall be given. When I change to that kind of prayer, life became very easy. Why? Because when we ask God for something, especially, Lord, what? I have nothing to do in my office. I have finished classes. I'm idle. Please give me some assignment. And God will give an assignment which is very easy and very productive in ministry. But of course, uh, it's not always like that. Because even in the Bible, the disciples, when they did ministry, there is uh, testing. There is uh, struggles, right? So I was observing one time, I saw one preacher here. He was saying, uh, Pastor Gulfan, he was saying, you know, when I was college student, me and my father, we planted four churches around Mountain View College. So I was wondering, Lord, I have joined many Voice of Youth, many crusades. When will I be able to plant, uh, help? I know planting is not easy. Uh, help plant churches. So I was just going around uh, helping my friends doing a Voice of Youth and other things. And the one time I saw one of my friends. She was not eating lunch. I said, why, what's wrong with you? Why are you not eating? She said, uh, because today is Sabbath is my fasting day. Oh, really? So I said, let me try to experiment also. So for one semester, I did not eat anything from Sabbath morning to Sabbath uh, sunset. Even if my headache is very terrible, you know, if you don't eat, sometimes you get headache. So for one semester, I tried. Because I found in the Bible, Moses was fasting, Elijah was fasting, the disciples was fasting, you know, and there is something about this. So I just experimented. We are scientists since we experiment. And what happened after that is amazing. You know, I'm not a theology uh, student nor a graduate. I'm just helping the theologians. And after that one semester of fasting, Accidentally, I became the speaker of two evangelistic uh, efforts. And accidentally also, uh, we were able to help church planting two, two locations in two locations. And wherever I went, I'm the speaker. They will see me, are you from AUP? You are in Barong. You are the speaker now. So I was wondering, what is happening, Lord? It's like, I, nothing changed in me, but it looks like when you fast, God puts you in more ministry. Did you observe Moses, 40 days, 40 nights? Ten commandments. Uh, Elijah, he went to heaven and he assigned Eli Elijah. Jesus Christ, before he got the disciples, of course, he started the whole Christianity uh, ministry. So there is something very powerful. If you want more ministry, fast. Experiment. Don't decide. Just experiment. You know, decision, sometimes it's, we, we have a hard time deciding. Experiment. You don't have to decide. Just try. One more uh, thing about uh, ministry is that uh, 
sometimes there are discouragements. One time, we were helping visit the prisons. And somehow, uh, we were stopped from visiting the prison. You know, in ministry, sometimes there is persecution. Sometimes the ministry doesn't go through. If, if you look at the ministries in the Bible, not everything went on smoothly. In fact, most of them were killed. So when these things happen, it's nice to have other ministries. There's a saying, don't put all your eggs in one basket because if it falls, then all of them break. So the idea I'm trying to suggest to you is to have many ministries. Don't be content and focus only one onto one. There is only one thing organizationally that will never fall. It is the Seventh-day Adventist Church according to prophecy. But if you have a small group, it might fall. But the Seventh-day Adventist Church according to last day events, it, might, it will look like it will not fall, but it will not according to prophecy. So that is the only thing stable. Stay inside the church, but have many uh, ministries. So let's look. Tapos na ba yung 15 minutes ko? Somebody said 15 minutes, somebody said 30 minutes. I will obey both. The 45 na. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, the Lord has many plans for us. I want to summarize. First, fasting and prayer, it really helps. Copying other people's ministries, it really helps. And listening to our pastors, our theologians, our church leaders, it really helps. You know, even after that uh, one semester of fasting, I was wondering in my class uh, schedule, why is my class schedule like this? Why is my class schedule like this? I found out in those semesters succeeding that one semester of Sabbath fasting, all my schedules of teaching were, were, may, were arranged so that I can attend Ayas Theological Forum and Week of Prayers miraculously without me planning ahead. Because you know, if you just have an idea of how clueless we are, right? But the Lord arranged our schedules and so many things really are happening. I think that is the formula in Acts. You know, when you want to do ministry, you study the word, you pray with your friends, many friends. I have more stories, but no more time. And you fast and pray, and really you do ministry. In fact, one of my favorites is helping evangelism because Sister White says, I'm par paraphrasing, we are strongest when we are in aggressive uh, service to the Lord. So. I would encourage all of you to join small group, small groups. There are so many small groups. You can choose. Just come to Sabbath school and look wherever you want to go. And you will find your friends there. You will find great people, especially also join Voice of Youth. I always say the people who join Voice of Youth, when they come back, they have smiles, bright smiles of joy in their faces. Those who don't join, wala lang. Para ka lang nag-absent. You just were, didn't go to class for how many weeks? But those who join, I can sense because there is this smile. They come back. Of course, they got hungry. They got chased by dogs and so on. But they are very happy. They are happy people. Happiness is in serving God. Amen? Okay, then join. Okay. So Jeremiah 29, 4 says, no, no. Let's go to Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. It says here, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. And do not lean on your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight, straight your paths. Okay, so in this, we can also confirm my suspicion that when we request, it's okay. But when we actually ask assignments from God, it is a better plan, diba? Yan. So those are the plans God has for us. In Jeremiah, it says God has good plans for us. And then in Proverbs, it says the Lord will make our path straight. How about your academics? I know this is exam week and I'm not supposed to go very long. But there is one secret in Psalms where it, it can help you become intelligent. One of my goals when I was college, I want to be like my classmates 
who never study but still get A. So I wanted to be intelligent. I said, why are some people more intelligent? Me, I try very hard, but just the, it's still wrong. But some people are very efficient mentally. So I was looking for solutions. There are solutions that are not good. There are solutions that are good also. But the solution that is the best, which I found, which is worth sharing, is in Psalms 119.99. Psalms 119.99. It says, I am better than, I am, have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. If you want to be better than your teacher, read the Bible. Read the testimonies one to nine. <laughs> the haba nun. And the, the Psalms 119.99 assures us that we will become better than our teachers. Imagine you have so many teachers, like maybe 20 teachers. You are collecting all their information that they teach you. So when you collect everything, then you can become better if we meditate on the testimonies. So really, according to the spirit of prophecy, the best for intellectual culture is the study of the word. That's why the theologians, they are very intelligent. Diba? Amen? Yeah, they become more intelligent than they were before. I have observed, you are laughing because maybe you are still young, but I have observed many people because of their study, the word of God has quickened their minds. So it's uh, one of the tips as you study uh, for your exam. So those are the things we can give God has plans for us. There are things we can do to, uh, to know God's plans for us. There are also things that we can do so that we can be more effective in ministry, which we see in the Bible and we affirm in the spirit of prophecy. We have an organization that has the goal of finishing the gospel according to Revelation 10. And we have a school structure that encourages and and understands this goal. So it's very, everything is actually set up specially for you, for us uh, students. So I encourage you to utilize all these possibilities in ministry, especially asking God assignments, asking God for assignments every hour, every day when you are not doing anything. When you wake up in the morning, the first thing, Lord, what, do we, what am I going to do today? And your long range plans. So those are the things that uh, will help you become successful in life. So that is my message. I hope, am I going to pray? Okay, let us pray as we close this message. Our Father in heaven, I praise the Lord for the truth in the Bible, the powerful truth that changes lives in the Bible. We praise you for your plan of salvation. We praise you, Lord, for saving us from our sins. For while we were yet sinners, you died for us, Lord. Help us, Lord, realize your love toward us. Help us react positively to your love toward us. Help us, give us wisdom and understanding in doing your work, Lord. Help us to be receptive to the Holy Spirit whispering to us, Lord. Help us to utilize all the the things that are set up here in the school and in ministries in small groups. We ask that you bless, Lord, your church as you have promised in the last day to pour out your Holy Spirit to all flesh, Lord. As your sons and daughters, the students, prophesy, tell of the second coming, which is actually a prophecy. We praise you, Lord, for your church, for the pastors, for the leaders, for the organization, for the prophecy, Lord, that is very clear of what we are going to do in the last days. We thank you for forgiving us, Lord, from all our sins. We are unworthy, wretched, poor, but we cannot understand your love for us, Lord. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. Please bless these students as they study. Help them to become the best in their professions, that their light may shine to all the world, and may the world give glory to you because of their witness. Thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.